Hello, it's Wednesday. That means what have I been up to this week? I have been uh, doing a paint. I've been painting the night haunts mostly and a little bit of a space ring. Let's look at the night haunts. Yeah. The, the, the big one's not painted. Um, if you follow my Instagram, or even if you look, even look at the community tab of this channel sometimes, you may have noticed that this person used to be painted um, and is now primed again. Uh, that's because I stripped her. I did, basic, basic reasons for stripping is I screwed up a few things later on in the process that I couldn't recover without stripping. Um, I repainted the roses on the vines like four times and by the time I figured out a recipe for painting roses that I liked which I should have realised I could have painted it on the bases but that's neither here nor there now by the time I found a recipe for painting the roses that I liked there was so much paint on them that I couldn't actually tell like what shape they were or even find their edges anymore so they had to be stripped um, the tiara which is a nightmare to paint by the way if you want to paint it well the tiara was, again, quite a lot of paint had built up and made it all quite blobby and I wanted to maintain it and, to be honest, this warband was on track for being a potential Golden Demon entry next May. Now, I don't think I'm going to win with it, but I don't have anything better painted that's Age of Sigmar unit category fodder at the moment than these night haunts. So on that basis, if I'm gonna go to Golden Demon and enter, some, enter anything, I may as well enter as many categories as I can, um, just for the sake of it. And so currently these guys were on track for being some of the best painted and also most uniformly painted to a certain skill level models that I've done in a very, very long time. Um, and this lady was letting the sides down because of all of the repaints that I'd done on her and all the touch-ups. And like I said, don't think I'll be able to win anything. But, you know, bronze would be the best I could hope for, but quite frankly, I think, realistically, the best I'll hope for is a finalist pen. Um, but I wanted to do her proud, do, do, them, do them to the right standard, uh, which is the same standards as the rest of the chain wasps, and she wasn't on track for that. So she's being repainted which I'll be doing probably tomorrow. Um, now that I know exactly how I'm going to paint her, it'll take a lot less time than all of the experiment experimentation that needs to be doing, done before. The chain rasps, on the other hand, looking absolutely gorgeous, in my opinion. It's very rare that I'm proud of a model. Um, and here, here some are. I'm going to be, so the way I'm going to split up this tutorial is the chain Varclav and the chain rasps, which sounds like a band, Barclav and the Chain Rasps are going to get a video, and then the Briar Queen's going to get a separate video. So this video is ready to be edited right now. Um, I just need my editor to edit it, and then I'll do the voiceover. Um, but yeah, these guys are ready. All the bases are done. The base will probably get covered in the Briar Queen's video, because I haven't painted it yet and I didn't get the base on camera. And to be honest, the Briar Queen's got a lot less on her that needs painting than the Chain Rasps, and a lot of it is actually gonna be painted a lot simpler with a lot less colors. So, I went with a bluey-green ghosty woo effect, um, and purple skin, um, because I'd seen it somewhere online and I liked it, but right now I'm, you know, I'm in two minds about it. I think it looks good on these chain rasps. I think a full unit of them would look a bit weird. Generally speaking, the paler you go, the better it looks. In some guys, it's actually pretty, pretty purple, like on this guy. I think on the pale, the ones with the paler arms, it looks a bit better. Um, very happy with how my skulls turned out on some of these. Very happy with the bases with the vines and the roses and everything going on there. The ghosty whir effect works really well. I'm quite happy with the metallics. I'm very happy with this guy. I think I nailed it, to be honest. The base, the rope, everything. So yeah, I'm dead chuffed with all of these chain rasps. That tutorial will be going up on Patreon 
let's say within a week. Um, it's hard to say because my editor has a, my editor is my partner. My editor has <laughs> um, a day job, which she's working and then doesn't necessarily always have the time to be able to edit the videos. But if they edit the videos, it means I get to spend the same the time when they're editing painting, which means we get more done, at least in theory. So I think they're looking pretty good. They, can't, they need a matte coat, which I want to bring the shine on the metallics down a bit. So they're looking pretty good. This hand was tricky until I realised that it actually passes through the ghosty wood effect to the other side. Um, generally speaking, not a lot of touch-up required on these models. I managed to nail everything first try, which almost never happens, you can, which is part of why I think I'm feeling so good about them. And this guy... These flagstones came out really nice on his base. And again, very chuffed with the ghosty wood effect and the metal, the, the metal, metals. That's not right. The metals, and also the wood and the rope effects. Yeah, it's all, it's all come up good on the chain rasp front. And this is how I'm going to be painting the entire the of my Night Haunts army that I'm going to be painting over the next yeah year. Although it's simple enough that once I've done the airbrush work, for yes, there is plenty of airbrush work. Um, it's simple enough that once that's done, that my partner can take over and do a bunch of painting the skin and painting the metallics. Which is all that's left to do on the vast majority of chain rasps, for example. You know, I've got 20 extra chain rasps to paint from Soul Wars. So, they're done. The six chain rasps, or five chain rasps in Barclav, are done. The thorns, as they're known. I have also been painting... A space marine not on camera just for funsies um, at the moment this guy is on track to be a golden demon single figure entry because I haven't screwed anything up on him yet that's basically my my rules um, still haven't done the battle damage on his army yet I've done the edge highlighting I've done most of the black lining I've been very very precise in all of this he's currently looking super high definition which is what I was going for. No washes have been used. So this was all done using my head magnifier and a very, very, very pointy brush. And a lot of patience and sticking my tongue out and holding my breath. This Aquila is probably the neatest Aquila that I've ever painted. Um, and it used no washes whatsoever. And I've got a few more bits. I've got some straps to paint still, but I've only base coated the straps. Got some more of this undersuit paint uh, in here and there and there, but the rest of it's not really going to be visible. Done the same with the shoulder pads. Yeah, it's a shoulder pad, but it's all quite nice and crisp so far. Uh, the battle damage will just be a few um, paint chips and scratches. Nothing too over the top, I'm trying to keep everything in scale. So there's his helmet top that he's holding. Um, the helmet lid may get a repaint when I do it. I can't remember what the helmet of a uh, Primaris Lieutenant in the Raptors chapter should look like. I'll look it up on the Raptors Facebook group later. But um, I can't remember if it's yellow with a white stripe. Down the thing. I think it's actually supposed to be a grey helmet and yellow with a white stripe. I've just painted it standard Raptors green for now because, you know, the green was done with an airbrush. And it's uh, not much extra work to highlight the helmet when you're doing the rest of the arm. I think someone asked me if I was going to wet blend the monitors on the wrists. And probably, but in all likelihood, it's probably just going to be glazes because it's such a small area. I'm going to do a little bit of an OSL there, but not a big, big amount because he's not looking at it currently, so he's not technically using it. I mean, technically that screen should be off if you're not using it, right? Power saving. Um, 
We've got the old gun here. I don't use my, many metallics on my raptors. On the basis of stealth, you don't want things that are shiny. So everything gets um, painted over or dulled down to black. Just base coated and washed the gun. And done the arm. So yeah, he's coming along dead nice. Just chipping away at him whenever I'm feeling a bit bored with my current project. Backpacks come along very nicely. Again, like I said, I haven't made any mistakes yet. Which is why he's destined for Golden Demon entry at the moment. Because it's much better to paint something really, really well with zero mistakes on it. Um, than to try something super difficult that you might screw up and then enter that. Because if that one thing that you screw up on it is going to discount you from getting anything. So a really solid paint job is more likely to get your finalist pin. Again, this would be into Golden Demon single figure 40k, the most competitive category in the entire event. It ain't gonna win. I have no delusions about that. It ain't gonna win a demon at all. It's just not gonna happen. Um, but it might get me a finalist pin, but it probably won't. But since I'm going to be entering into Golden Demon anyway, again, may as well enter whatever the best thing in each category that I've painted in the last year is. And this is probably going to be the best painted 40k single figure that I will paint by May. So, yeah, he's going to go into that category. Assuming I don't screw up something massively on him. That's pretty much all I've been painting. <clears throat> I have also primed up a whole bunch of stuff yesterday. Just was a priming machine, which includes uh, this, oop, yep, my dragster, I semi-assembled it just to make sure that I had gotten everything that would be visible, um, did this last night, all of the primer should have cured by now. The rest of the guys are in the display case sitting next to it where it sits getting undusty. Um, the insides of the tyres will probably have to be repainted before they get glued back on because they're going to get scratched up. So yeah, this guy is going to get painted and bits of it will be fodder for tutorials um, in the future. So stay tuned to Patreon for those. And the other things I've been painting, well, primed, ready for painting, because they weren't before, and they should have been, but they weren't, is the old Carob Colm of the Risen now has some primer on him. He's, like, completely in bits. I haven't assembled him remotely. Like, not a single thing has been attached on this model yet. Every single part of him is being painted individually. Um, unfortunately, one part didn't like the primer because I think there's still some mold release on this knee pad that needs to be removed, but I'm pretty sure I'll be able to fix that. Um, yeah, Carab Cull the Risen, he's back on the go. For those that don't know, He's currently, ooh, got a gene to do to attach that box, in this box, with his uh, base about, what, 80% done? Just a few little bits left to do, but I have to wait until I've actually got him attached before I finish it. And basically just the armour colours. Where's the focal point? There it is on his lower half completed. So in case you have not seen him before, he's in bits in his little uh, Ford World box, waiting for me to finish him. So I've got to reproduce this colour uh, color blend with the airbrush, which I believe it was VMA Dark Grey Blue up to Fenrisian Grey. 
as a transition, just mixing from one to the other. Um, certainly that's what I've been using to touch it up. Um, so that's to be done. I'm quite happy with the, the battle damage on it. This is the kind of battle damage that the Raptors captain will get, like not completely over the top. I mean, this guy is a dreadnought, so his arm is not going to be as well maintained. Slash, he's going to be putting himself way more in harm's way than your traditional stealthy Raptors guy will. All of this stuff here that I've painted, warp block bronze, is actually going to get repainted for the most part black, like all of this area in here. I tried painting it metallics and I decided I didn't like it. I'm actually going to paint it black and edge highlight it. Um, and then do very, very few bits of it in actual metallics. Again, the logic being the only areas that are suffering extreme wear or benefit from being exposed metal will do so. So, for example, this ball joint here, that will be an exposed um, metal kind of chrome stainless steel type effect with some greasy covering over it as a lubricant to, in order to aid it to rotate in its socket and a few other little bits will be metal for example this connecting ring here will probably also at the very least be have a lot of weathered edges on it but I decided to go mostly with black because I think the metallics weren't going to look good next to the very high quality paint job of the paint colour, so that's what I've gone. I'm going with, and I've got the rest of the little details to paint. But the thing is, individually, each part doesn't take that long. But probably, I'm going to end up put maybe 80 to 90 hours into this guide by the end of it. Which, again, it's Warhammer 40k vehicle. I don't think I'll win anything, but I'll make a good showing of it. Again, I've entered Golden Demon the last two years at the uh, Warhammer Fest and only come away with two pins and they were both for things that I didn't paint specifically for Golden Demon. So, meh. Not really kidding myself about the chance of getting an award. But I do enjoy painting to this standard and it massively improves my abilities and painting it because I'm forcing myself, to, I'm pushing myself essentially, I'm forcing myself to paint better. Zarbag's Gits I also primed, they're currently sitting in the display cupboard out of the way. Again, still got this one squig left to finish off. Um, haven't painted it while I was painting the Nighthaunts. But my current plan is finish the Briar Queen tomorrow so that we can edit the videos for that and put it up on Patreon. And then finish this one squig and then go straight into painting Zarbag's Gits. At least getting all the base colours down on those as soon as possible. Um, so, yeah, the Friday, hopefully, I'll just go straight into doing Zarbag's Gits. And just constantly, you know, paint this guy up in the meantime. And then once Zarbag's Gits are done, which hopefully won't actually take me that long, because they're m the, most of the goblins are mostly cloak. And I already know I'm going to paint the cloak. I already know how to paint goblin skin, because it's basically the same as orc skin, just a little bit lighter. And I already know how to paint the weapons. The only real wild card in all of this was the squigs and um, some of the magic effects and the toadstools. And I already experimented with doing toadstools on the bases. So I think Zlabag's Gits should be something of a slam dunk and will only take me a couple of days to paint, at which point I'm effectively caught up on YouTube content, apart from the dragster. And then I'm going to start working on the dragster. Again, but I'm going to be filtering in competition entries in the meantime. So that's what I've been doing. Um, I tried out... Where are they? Do, 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 do. They're not in there. Tried out these Redgrass Games paintbrushes while I was painting the Night Haunts. Did a lot on the chain rasps with those actually. Um, 
short version, they're very, very good. I got the size, uh, what is it, two zero or something? Yeah, it's two zero and a two. Not that they actually stock anything other than those. They don't have a full range of sizes or anything. I guess they're leaving themselves open for expansion in the future. Yeah, I got, got the size two zero and the two, and I use both of them a lot, and they're both very good paint brushes for general use. The problem is the price, they're too expensive. They're probably a little bit better than Rosemary & Co Series 33s in terms of uh, the size of the belly, how much paint they can hold, and how much snap they've got. But they're almost three times the price. And that's too expensive, quite frankly. Like, there isn't anything super unique about them that makes them a really, really great buy, and also the actual presentation of them isn't great, you know, there's nothing... Like, you look at those Artist Opus brushes that Element Games are flogging all over, over the place, it's £50 for a big display wooden box that, that your brushes come in, and it's like, oh, look at these, they're special brushes. I have no idea if they're any good, but at least you get a wooden box for your 50 quid. Um, to be honest, I don't care about the wooden box. You know, just give me the paint brushes. I'm going to store them somewhere else anyway. Stop trying to tart it up with a wooden box. I don't care about that shit. Whoops, I swore. Who oh, no. It was only the S word. It was fine. Um, but yeah, these Redgrass Games ones, the font isn't even very nice, particularly on the side of the handle, so you're not getting a lot extra for that extra money, and again, I would rather have two Rosemary & Co Series 33s than one Redgrass Games brush. It's just the way it is. I mean, they're presumably not actually making their brushes in-house, and they're licensing them from somewhere else. So somebody, some other company is making those brushes for them, and then they're putting Redgrass Games um, branding on them, and then they're charging a markup on that. Find out who's making those brushes and buy them from them. So, yeah, that's the thing. They're good brushes, but they're not worth the money that you're paying for them. Which I would also say is true about the Winter Newton Series 7s. They're good brushes, but they're not worth that much money. And I think they tried to price themselves to be roughly equivalent to the Winter and Newton Series 7s, which have an overinflated price because of their brand. And Redgrass Games do not have that level of uh, brand yet. So, sorry RGG, I can't recommend those brushes. I'm still only recommending Rosemary Co Series 33s and the one Broken Toad Size 0 that will make your edge highlighting amazing. So there you go, that's it. Long ramble over. Spooky boys, that's what we're getting next. Spooky, spooky, scare. no. Woo ghost. That's it. You can subscribe to the channel there if you like this kind of stuff. Uh, check out my Patreon for early access to painting tutorials and colour guides. There's uh, something YouTube thinks you'll like up there. And my social medias over there. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.